So you know how in life you usually try to avoid fitting into stereotypes? Like for instance, I'm a liberal, but I have some conservative viewpoints and I really don't like driving Priuses. Contrary to what most conservatives think, I actually do not believe that I am entitled to whatever the hell I want. Then there are days where you just find yourself fitting into way too many stereotypes. You mean like today when you walked into a Starbucks wearing a Too Right Love on her arm shirt after a one and a half hour shift in a pizzeria to order an um, item on the menu that doesn't even exist and lemon cake because you realize that, you know, they don't usually have it and this may be the only chance for a while. Yeah. It's a problem. That's right, Reezy Waiter. You're not the only one who can have cologne. So yesterday was July 4th and what I really wanted to talk about today was my favorite American moments. So with that, I'm going to give you my top three favorite American moments of all time and amazingness and woo, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> Number three, faced with the idea of having to pay even more taxes than they were already paying without any chance to represent themselves in the British government, revolutionaries in Boston decided that it would be a good idea to have somewhat of a silent protest in order to specifically protest the tax on tea that was coming in a group of patriots dressed up as native american indians went onto a boat that was absolutely filled with tea and dumped all of it into the ocean for a long time after that the ocean was actually much darker in boston harbor because of how many tea bags there had actually been dumped into the ocean. Number two of my favorite moments all time is World War One. World War One has one of my favorite moments in history, partially because it's one of my favorite time periods in history. It really showed how the first world nations had progressed over time, and it really led to the modern warfare that you see today. Much like we often saw in the 20th century, America didn't really want to get involved in this war, uh, they really didn't see what it had to do with them at all. After another one of the U.S.'s submarines had been knocked down by German forces, the United States decided to join World War I, more of which you can find out in this book right here. At the time, we were only about in the top 15, top 20 of strength in army right before World War I, and that was part of the reason that we stayed out of it. We didn't think we had much of a chance. Germans knew that if the United States came into the war, the war would be over. There was no chance that Germany would come away victorious. Still, the Germans thought it was a good idea to keep needling America to try and show its power to the point where the United States was like, you know what? Okay, it's on. We're taking you down. And sure enough, within a year, the stalemate had ended, Germany had lost, and they were completely demolished in the Treaty of Versailles. Number one takes place just towards the end of the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln, who was commonly known as being one of the greatest presidents of all time, actually was a huge supporter of abolishing slavery. The South, on the other hand, completely disagreed with him. I don't really have to tell you guys the whole story behind the Civil War. I mean, it's just, it's basically, we want to abolish slavery and we want to fix what's going on in the South. And the South was like, we're doing pretty damn well for ourselves. Please do not try to mess up everything that we've worked so hard to create. It led to the bloodiest war on U.S. soil. It was just amazing how terrible this was for the United States at the time. Towards the end of it, Abraham Lincoln, uh, made a speech at a train station uh, called the Emancipation Proclamation and it basically said that slaves were now free men and that was one of the turning points in this country. Now granted there are definitely a lot of moments that are just as good uh, and there are definitely ones that I've left out. I actually left out one of my favorites that's actually a sports moment, The Miracle on Ice. If you don't know what The Miracle on Ice is, I severely suggest that you watch the movie Miracle. As well, The New Deal. The New Deal was awesome because that got us out of the Great Depression, but the problem is, is that The New Deal originally led to a double dip depression, and The New Deal actually needed a lot of, a lot of minor tweaks to it, and that allowed the New Deal to become much better, much stronger, and then it led us out of the Depression. We actually had two near Great Depressions. But just like that, there are many others. Uh, I could go on for days about this, but I am not. All right, but I gotta go, guys, so I'll talk to you guys later. All righty, bye. All righty, so hey, guys, this is me post... Oh, come on.
Focus. Focus. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is me post-edit of the vlog. Um, let me know down below what you thought about that. Uh, I, I know it was kind of poorly done, but uh, I just wanted to see if it was possible on my on my computer, so I added that in. And it's kind of a Mika Kitty slash uh, Wheezy Waiter type vlog, and I just wanted to try it. Rory, it has been an privilege, it's been an honor to vlog with you these past couple of months. It's, we're sad to see you go. You know that we are. Um, we'll try to keep in touch with you. I'll try, I, I know I'm terrible at contacting you via Skype, but it's just because usually the times I'm free, it is like ungodly early at, uh, in your time zone. If you are interested in auditioning for, for Rory's spot, uh, you can post a video response on uh, the video from Wednesday. The link will be down below. Uh, yeah, that's it. Really, uh, that's all I needed to say. Um, but yeah, I mean, Rory, we're gonna miss you, dude. Miss you already. I uh, can't wait to see your final video tomorrow. Um, yeah, just everybody else, remember to post your audition tapes, uh, videos, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, all right.